All right, let's start with thinking. So what happens in face recognition? Something like this comes in, hits your retina. That's my crappy side view of a retina. Some magic happens inside your head, and you know that's Julia Roberts. Or if this comes in, you do the same thing, and you spit out Brad. So the whole question is, what's going on in the box? Okay. So when I say, at the level of computational theory, we characterize the inputs, we characterize the outputs, that helps us figure out what is the mystery to be understood. The mystery is that box. Okay. All right. So now that we know that, um, we can think about, it doesn't seem that hard, right? This should be really easy. All you need to do to solve this problem is to have a bunch of templates, right? A bunch of little pixel representations that we can hold up, hold it up to Julia, see if it matches. If it does, we say Julia. If it doesn't, we don't. If it matches Brad, we say Brad, right? Piece of cake. Just store a bunch of templates of the people we know, right? Every on board, everybody on board with this idea? Is that going to work? What you have this literal template, if it's a bunch of pixels, the chance is approximately zero that that image will land on your retina ever again, right? From a million ways that things change, like look at what happens to my face like this. The pixels, if you, if you had a um, camera, the pixels that change in my face when you see me like this or this or this, the pixel changes are greater than the changes you would have from this to Sarah in exactly this orientation, right? So orientation changes are bigger than identity changes, right? And that's just orientation. We have lighting changes. We have you know, weird stuff that happens with hair, right? We have all kinds of, we have expression changes all the time. I'm moving my face around as I talk, right? So there are millions of changes. Um, so this is never going to work, right? By the way, when I ask you questions and I want you to think, I often don't put it down on the slide because that's because I want you to think. <laughs> Okay, I'm sure you all knew this, anyway. Um, so this is more like the problem that we face when we're trying to recognize Julia and Brad. This is just, you know, a schema of it. There's an infinite set of these and an infinite set of those. And so now, already, this is what I mean by the level of computational theory. You just look at this and you realize, oh, right, okay. All of a sudden, now we know some more about what kind of stuff goes on in here. It's not going to be trivial. Whatever it is, is pretty tricky. Okay, everybody got that? Okay, so this is the, 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 the simple statement of this is that the same person or thing can look infinitely many different ways as it changes in all these different viewing conditions. Position on your retina, distance and size, think how big my face is to you right now versus how small it is right now. Those are other image changes. And if you, if you fixate on my finger, look at my finger. See, my face is now landing on different parts of your retina, right? So all those are changes, um, even before we get to viewpoint and expression and hair and all that stuff. Okay, so that's why this is a really big challenge for all of visual recognition, not just face recognition. Okay, okay. so we still manage. What do we do? Well, one possibility is we just memorize all of those, or a lot of them, enough so that when, when Julia comes along, she'll match one of the ones we have. That seems kind of ludicrous. Do we have room in our head for all of that? Well, who knows how many neurons that takes. It sounds crazy, but if we're enumerating the possibilities, some version of that might be the case. I'll actually show you evidence in a moment that actually we kind of do something like that a little bit, at least some of the time. Okay. Another possibility is that the representation that we use in face recognition is more abstract. It isn't like a template. It isn't like a bunch of pixels. It's, like, it's something like unusually wide eye spacing or um, heart-shaped face outline or something like that. If you could extract those features from a face and store those, then maybe all of these different, or in Julia's case for me, like the diagnostic part is the upper lip. I don't know what it, what it is with her upper lip, but there's something very diagnostic right here. Whatever that is, if you could store that bit, um, you could extract that from all of these, right? So maybe there's some more abstract featural representation uh, of a face. I'm being very vague here, but just something more abstract than pixels, then all of those images would end up at the same representation, and that would solve the problem of invariance right there. Okay, so those are just loose caricatures of strategies you might use to solve this problem. Okay, everybody get the difference between those? Okay. Um, okay, how would we find out? Okay. Um, so we just did all this thinking business. Um, what MAR level is all of that? 
Yes. I'm sorry, say your name again. We're just Lauren, yes. Compu yeah? Yes, computational theory, all of this. Okay.